G'day, mate, and welcome back to Factorio with me, JD. Uh, go faster, labs. And, oh, this episode. So, last episode, we, we added a lot of automation. Uh, maybe not enough to keep this, this guy happy, but, you know. You know what? I'm sick of playing with him already. Oh, really? I'm handcrafting a heap of them. Uh, done. So, output the coal, and then if you run out, if, if, if there's room to shove coal in there, put coal in. There we go. Problem solved. Okay. Um, so last episode, we set up an a heap of automation. We got, um, we got some defenses laid out. Um, we've got science packs automated, which are, actually, I think we're producing them faster you know what? I think we're produce, still producing them faster than what we can use them. Uh, now we've got some undergrounds. I am going to put an underground from there to there. And move that guy over. And Oh, okay. So, another thing I can show off is I've got 10 packs. And now I could just put 10 packs in a lab. But I really want them to be distributed evenly. So I'm going to put 10 packs in the output slot for this guy. And that instead will just take over. And he'll just put them onto the belt. So, so one less thing I've got to worry about. So this episode, I really want to get... I want to harvest all our boxes. Because we're going to need a lot of stuff. Because um, I want to get our first real smelter block running. We've, we've got a sort of a temporary burner city set up. Um... But I want a proper smelter block. So a smelter block is something that you can hopefully just feed in a belt of iron or copper or stone or whatever it is. And it'll just output the, the smelted version of that material. So I am one to min-max games to a certain extent. Um, so I will let you in on, on exactly what the ratios are to min-max a belt. Um, a yellow belt, which is the very first belt we've got access to, moves 15 items per second. Um, iron and copper both have a crafting speed of 3.2 per second, and they require one iron or one copper um, to complete that, one iron or one copper to complete that craft. So for one half a belt, you actually need 24 smelters. I was off by one. 24 smelters to do half a yellow belt's worth of worth of items, okay? Um, and it's maths, it's it's fairly easy maths, he says in a, in a I'm not doing the maths live on, on camera for you. Um, but if you take 3.2 items, uh, 3.2 seconds, and do some multiplication and some other stuff and blah, 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 you'll get out at seven, seven and a half items per second being one half of a belt. Um, no, hang on. If you do 3.2 seconds and you multiply it by 24, you then get seven and a half per second. All right. What we actually want is we want a full belt's worth. So we want the whole 15. So we need twice as many, but we can look at our, oh, wow. We really did run out of coal. Uh, coal. Just do a quick coal refill. Yep. And science is still ticking along nicely. Um, which probably means you guys are about to run out of coal as well. Um, which means we, we, we want to... to well, actually, where was it? You can see our inserters. Um, this guy, for argument's sake. Let's go pick up some of this science again. Load it back in there again. You can see the inserter only outputs on one side of the belt. Okay. So for me to get twice as many furnaces or to, to output to both sides of the belt, I actually need to have another furnace. If I've got the belt in the middle, I need to have another furnace on the other side with another inserter to output onto both sides of the belt. So using some of the advanced commands given to us in uh, version 17, we now have a copy and a paste command. So control C to copy which now means I have all those furnaces in my hand, but I can't see where to place them because it's dark. Again, if we go to map view, 
I can then line them up there, slide them up the required amount of tiles, click to paste, and I can now see where they're meant to be. Um, these are ghost images. They obviously are a little bit um, of the eternal, eternal photoplasm, something, something joke, right? And don't quite exist. So they don't quite work terribly well. Hi, biters. Oh, they're going to keep scaring the shit out of me until we're done with them. Um, so I need to insert on one side, I need to insert um, of obviously what we want to smelt being the raw material. Plus, I want to insert some sort of fuel because I want this 100% automated. Um, I don't want to have to come back and deal with this at all. So I need to get materials in off a belt. So let's run a belt down here. Actually, I'm going to stand on the belt to get the speed boost from the belt and lay the belt at the same time. So I'm going to have items come in on one side and output on the other. Before I go any further, I want to copy that. I want to rotate it twice so it's facing the opposite direction. And I want to put that there. The belt might be facing the wrong way. And if I press Q on it, you can see I've picked it up facing the wrong way. But I know where the belt's got to go now. I can just run along and pop the belt down going the direction I want. Now, if I, oops, load up these inserters. No, nope, I'm out. Uh, and inserters actually only take half a second to craft, providing that the prerequisites crafted. This is why I make sure our starter base is a little bit overscaled for what we want. Um, but I really, really want it to be um, fairly beefy so I don't have to worry about handcrafting intermediates being over here, the gears and the electronic circuits and the copper cable, because they take a very, very long time to craft. Uh, I will still need to craft power poles because I didn't bother automating those. So we can now put fuel on one side of the belt and ore on the other side of the belt, feed it all the way along, feed into our furnaces um, on both sides, you know, on, on both the, the top side of the belt and the bottom side of the belt. One thing I do want to add is, again, Factorio is all about automation. I actually want to put fuel on both, you know, fuel on this belt and this belt, and I want to put ore on this belt and this belt. So the next thing I actually want is I want some splitters. Now a splitter takes one belt of material in, and we can demonstrate this by grabbing some inserters, pressing the Z button to dump them on the ground, and you can see it split them evenly between the two belts. So I want to put a splitter in to split the material. Then I want to put another splitter in facing it. And when I hook these up, you'll see that, we'll cut that off and we'll cut that off so things don't wander too far away. And if I use belts on one, if I put belts on belts, I know the, 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 the irony there. And then splitters on the other, uh, splitters, um, inserters on the other. You can see I've, I've fed half a belt with with one material and half the belt with the other because both these are what we refer to as side loading onto this belt. So I can now put fuel in and ore in and we will magically have, whoop, have everything split onto the two belts. But as this is my first furnace, I actually want to put two different belts in. I want to put one belt of iron. There we go, there's our research. Uh, so let's get more shooting damage. Let's get heavy armor, because that's going to sound important. Uh, we'll get some optics, actually. Let's cancel, cancel. We'll do optics first, because it's it's only f uh, 10 science packs at 15 seconds. Right? It, it's a really fast research. Then we'll get some shooting speed. Then, no, let's get some armor. Then shooting speed. We'll get stone walls, which we don't really have a purpose for yet. We'll get electronic circuits, which are unlocked. Unlock one more tech, being fast inserters. We'll grab those as well. It's just an inserter that, that goes faster, hence why the name of fast inserter. And then I think the last red-only tech that we can unlock is going to be logistic science packs, being the second science pack. So we will have finished automation science pack, and we'll be moving on to the next science. So I want to put in two different materials. I actually want to put iron in one side and copper in the other because 
for what our starter base is, we're going to be using a bit of both. And I don't actually have two smelter blocks up and running. So I'm going to sort of bastardize this one a little bit and put mixed items in. Uh, this will make power, obviously, which means we're probably going to have to look at upgrading power again shortly. Uh, put power pole there. And one thing I can do is the way power poles work is normally they work at maximum distance. But because I need have things put down that need power, they'll actually work it. They'll put down at the maximum distance that they can, but still make sure that they power every single item. So rather than me having to manually run along and decide where a power pole should and should not go. Uh, nope, I need a stack more of those, please. Uh, that's the point of handcrafting stuff. Let's not do that. I can grab a power pole and just run up the sides and down the middle and make sure everything's powered automatically. Uh, okay, so we're going to start here and we're going to run up the belt for the speed boost all the way to the end. Everything's powered, everything's happy. These guys are all flashing because they don't have fuel. We'll hook up fuel for them shortly. We're going to raid our boxes again. Uh, raid all our coal, not that we really need it. Our inventory is absolutely full. Refill coal into everything that needs coal. Uh, we can raid iron out of the ones that aren't hooked up to anything. We can manually, you're the one that handcraft, so you manually give those to a heap of iron, manually give you a heap of iron, and you a heap of iron because the inserters do not push iron in fast enough. Um, and as you can see, our little loop here, we're putting coal out, and if this guy can't take coal in, he doesn't get coal in, but it means he no longer runs out of fuel. That's the important thing. Uh, put coal in there, coal in there, pick up the copper from there. We've got heaps and heaps of materials. Um, so where do we start? So we need, we need to keep going forward with electricity. So we want electric miner drills. They are the next big leap in technology. Rather than me having to worry about trying to put coal into everything, I can just power these guys up with some power and then I don't have to worry about them. Um, and belts. So let's start with our coal. We want a couple of undergrounds, cancel all those, add them back afterwards. 11. So I want to come under here, over to here. Mm. No, I want to go over time. I then want to curve that out. So I want to be able to feed coal in here, have it be split off and run up to our next furnace block. At the same time, take the coal out and put it in there. And for the moment, because I have absolutely so much coal in my hand, I'm just gonna start with a single inserter, just shoving coal in there. That, that's good enough, that's enough to get things started. Do I have, I've got plenty of inserters. Let's half that box. And I do that by control, control right click, we'll take out half the contents. Uh, if I put it all back, whoops all back rather i can control right click to halve it put the other half in there done we can start having coal fed into this automatically we can take our mining drills and you can see that they have an area of effect being the tiles underneath them plus one square all the way around them and there's lots of different arguments arguments comments about how you should set up your miners I put them side by side one another um, for absolute maximum coverage. I want to get as much copper or iron or whatever the material is out of these patches as possible. I could space them out and I could put a one tile gap in between and they would still quite happily um, quite happily mine out the whole patch, but they'll do so at a slower rate because there's overall less miners. Right? When I have four miners beside one another, if somebody spaced them, they're only going to have three miners beside one another. Um, I would prefer to have more materials out. 
and we're just going to do that now because i haven't put a splitter in i've just fed one hole belt in it's going to side load in here and it means this side of our smelter is just going to output copper um, which as you can see with the inserters are going to put on the top side of the belt so what is the bottom down here becomes the top in that middle belt and on the other side of that i want to do iron so i want to have a mixed smelter to start with uh, we'll take I've only got six of them Read this, read this, read this, read that, read that. Uh, mix some more. 25. 25 is probably enough. <coughs> I should start on the edge. Uh, now, my last miner down here. So you can see this one expected resource is 18,000 iron. This guy is going to have some iron and some stone. I'm not going to deal with that at this moment. I'm going to make sure that I have nothing but iron on this belt. Um, we'll deal with filtering out excess resources in another episode. Okay, that's overkill. That's way too much iron, but that's fine. I'm going to bring that belt out. And then I'm going to bring this belt out. Now I have two different belts, and they're both going to have, if I make more power poles. Oh, nope, they did. Ah, uh, they're further north. Okay, put down another one of those. Give that heaps of ammo. Because I've got so much, I'm gonna start putting 50 in them. Uh, we'll just run this one down this side and we'll join them at the top so I'm going to have two belts both of which will have iron on them what I can do is I can put a splitter on the end which splits incoming belts in cargo in a one to one ratio it also merges two belts together so now if you see you can see it's taking a bit from each belt. Uh, we're going to move that gun turret up here. And I'm going to handcraft a heap of those and a heap of those. I'm going to take this belt along. Because I've already got an underground there. We're then going to underground this copper or get it out of the way using the fast replace so as you can see because i i covered the belt all those red segments in the middle when i click will just disappear and whatever's there will end up in my inventory right. and then i can use fast replace again to very very slowly place one item over another uh, let's dump that copper in there the iron will do the same. I'm just holding right click and just dragging along to get rid of that excess iron. So we now have iron on half a belt, copper on half a belt with not nearly enough coal incoming. So again, back to the electric mining drills. I've still got a handful left. I don't need a lot of coal because furnaces of honestly don't use that much coal. Um, if you're concerned about how many furnaces you can run in a row, it's something in the vicinity of like 700 off a yellow belt of coal. They really don't use that much coal. Um, you saw earlier that my burner miner drills ran out of coal long before my smelters ran out of coal. Uh, power this lot up. Now, I already have a belt of coal here, so I might as well merge the two together and then try and work out a good spot, probably after the labs. Now, labs are going to get moved. Take the belt off again. Okay. And at the same time, no, they are fully automated now. That's right. I forgot I fully automated them. So we're going to take our belt up and across and back up again 
we're also going to go through this same gap. Bring that around and shove that in there. Now, I have these two guys here. They, they start off with a heap of coal. They don't have a lot left. Um, but they have had enough to get this system up and running. All these furnaces have an... Ooh. We have a power problem. All these furnaces have an internal buffer in them of up to 100 material. So the most important thing when building these blocks is to get the outside belts done, the ones that feed into the furnaces. And then you get the inside ones done after the fact so they can output them. Um, as you can see, you might have output it onto a belt that's sitting there doing nothing. Because we don't have any drawer on the belt yet. Yet. Uh, power. We want another boiler. Actually, let's make it two boilers. We want four steam engines. Um, and plus we need pipe in the middle. So the ratio for our steam engines is one, one offshore pump to 20 boilers to 40 steam engines. Okay, so we're gonna, I crafted one, really? Craft two. Okay, there we go. Uh, I wanna put a pipe here in the middle to let our water pass through. I then need to put down our steam engines. As you can see, these two have already using that power pole. I need another power pole over here to power up this lot. And as soon as we add some sort of fuel to them, uh, some sort of fuel to them, they will start boiling, start producing more power, and you can see, bang, we're back in the green instantly. Okay. Power to spare. Now, I used burner inserters to start with. One, because that's all the inserters we had. The advantage of using a burner inserter is should your coal run out for some reason or your, you, you have a, a, a feedback loop, okay? Um, so, obviously, we've swapped over to electric miners. If they have less power, they have less coal that they actually output. Um, if they're outputting less coal and we're burning coal for power, again, we're going to have less power because we can't get it in fast enough. So a lot of people put down burner inserters because no matter what, as long as there is some fuel on the line, they will keep running. They will keep burning that fuel. Whereas a powered inserter, if it starts to run out of power, it moves slower. If it moves slower, there is a chance it's not going to move fast enough to keep up with the speed that this boiler is burning power, uh, burning coal. So... It is something to keep in mind. Um, normally, for ver my very first power block, I normally use all burner inserters. Um, I'm not too worried about it at the moment because I am going to salvage a heap of burner inserters and stuff from this mess when we get there. Um, all these guys or, or any burner inserters I've, I've used in here will get put in that power block um, when we rip up all this because all this has got to go. It's, it's all temporary. It's all what we needed to get us started. Um, but now we're, we're well and truly started with a, a proper smelting block. Um, we can now look at something a little bit more high-tech. Uh, and yes, I'm picking up a lot of stone. And you can see I've crafted a lot of stone furnaces. We're going to use them. We're going to need them. There is going to be a lot of, of furnacing to do. Now... Down here, some people may have it, some people don't. Um, because this is a fresh install, I actually don't have any of the more advanced options, um, like blueprinting. So blueprint is to, if you hit B, you can go into a blueprint and make a blueprint of exactly that. Hit the OK button and then paste it down somewhere else. Um, but that goes in your inventory when you're done with it and sits there and potentially takes up space until you destroy it. One of the new things in version 17 was the copy paste feature. So this is a smelter block. I want a couple of smelter blocks. Um, to be honest, I want four, five, eight, probably eight. Um, I'm, I'm imagining four lots of iron and four lots of copper is probably what we're going to aim for in the end. Um, so I want a smelter block. I want one smelter block down like that. And before I go any further, I want to make sure it's it's completely lined up so I can copy and paste it. Hi, Biters, again. Okay, that gun turret got damaged, so he needs a friend to keep him company. Done. So, I've put in the, that underground there. 
uh, and that piece of missing belt along with our splitter. So now if I copy that, and you can see if I line up correctly, that underground will line up. So I'm going to hold down. If I left click, I'll get told trees are in the way. If I hold down shift and left click, it'll place down and put a little red X on any of these trees that need to disappear. And unfortunately, I just moved it off by a tile and, and mistakes happen. So if I go into my blueprints, I can get a deconstruction planner. So deconstruction planner lets you just hover over something and say, all of that cancel. Um, I can then hold down shift and remove anything that's currently marked for deconstruction. If I press V again, it'll bring up the last thing I copied. Um, oh, control V again. Um, and if I hold down shift and use my mouse wheel, I can see if there's anything else I've copied in the past. So there is the original 24 furnaces we had. Uh, there is the 24 furnaces with the belt and the inserters. And then here is the complete smelter block. And again, we're going to go to map view. Nope, that's the wrong one. That is the complete one. So we're going to go to map view so I can actually see what I'm doing with the extra help of that little bit of extra night vision. So that is four smelters in a row. They can be four iron, four copper, it doesn't matter. Um, before I do my next set of four, I'd normally leave a gap. And I would probably leave... And again, we can do this using the ghost tool. One, two, three, four. I'd probably leave a four tile gap. Um, it gives you a little bit of room between one block and the next um, to fit anything else you might want to pop pop in. And then I can just put in my next four. So that's us planned out. This will be what we refer to as our smelter blocks, which will lead into a main bus. Um, main bus is just all the resources get output to one area and then you can then draw them off the bus for anything you wish to produce. Now, this is planning very, very far in the future. We don't need quite this much at the moment. Um, what we actually need is, we're researching it right now, we're researching logistic science pack, which is the next science pack we need, which is transport belt and inserters, which we've been using a lot of, but we haven't automated. So we haven't automated it yet. So it's currently being researched. It's being researched, I imagine, fairly quickly. Uh, yep, these two assemblers are going as fast as they can. So with our temporary furnace, which will output a good supply of iron and copper, um, in the next episode, we're going to re-automate Red Science. Um, paying a little bit more attention to the ratio. At the same time, we're going to automate green science um, and move our labs all across. So we can have science being produced at a faster rate. Um, and then from there, we'll start looking at getting further and further into the game. Anyway, I'm going to call it here for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying. Um, I will catch you guys hopefully in the next episode. Well, definitely in the next episode. I'll definitely be there. I, I really hope you guys will be there too. Um, where we'll go through, we'll automate red science, we'll automate green science, and we'll start pumping through the research. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you're enjoying this series. And I'll see you on the next episode of Factory Island. Thanks for watching. Bye.